it does look quite funky. Mr. Twingo RS worthy of the RS badge. I really, really like this car. You do still feel the Twingo DNA. You learn as you go, right? Yeah, that's a, that's a Doblo GTI. What's up guys, welcome to this POV review by Autostop L. My name is Martin, and today I'm taking a look at a used second-hand affordable hot hatch. And the smallest one I could find, this is the Renault Sport Twingo, or the Renault Twingo RS, as we call it, Renault Sport Twingo for the people in the UK. Now, this is 1.6 liters of naturally aspirated fun and as you might know, we love Renault Sport models and we just wanted to cover this. Now, a while ago, I reviewed a Abarth 500 as a first car, maybe a first performance car. This is the main rival at the time, back in 2008 when this was released. Now, the Renault Twingo, this is the second gen it's not the most sporty vehicle. What have Renault Sport done to make this something worthy of the RS badge? Now, let me tell you. First of all, they decided it had to look a bit more chunky and less twingo-y. So they gave it this like wide body, you know. They just glued on this body kit. Um, it's kind of awesome, right? It's it's really, really wide. I really, really like that. Just have a look at the fuel filler cap. It's kind of similar to the one you find on the Clio V6. It's also with this amazing wide body. I mean, that's like four centimeters, something like that, um, which is awesome. Now, this is owned by Mr. Twingo RS Cup. Go follow him on Instagram. And the fact that this is a cup car, you can see that because of the wheels, because you then get these 17 inch cup wheels and normally a Twingo RS has 16 inch wheels. Now a normal Twingo RS is a centimeter lower than a regular Twingo, but the cup is even lower, 1.4 centimeters and is even harder suspension wise so this really is made to do track days and stuff like that now what do you think guys does this look like a Renault Sport model it does have a little diffuser a sporty exhaust that one has is an aftermarket unit by the way little spoiler right there Renault Sport badge it does look quite funky. Renault Sport sticker on the side, red brake calipers, and a front end that's just a bit more aggressive. Now let's have a look at the engine. Tiniest bonnet ever, it's, it's super tiny. Now, here we have it, the 1.6 liter, 16 valve, 133 horsepower, 160 newton meters, um, 8.7 to 100 kph, and a top speed of 201. So, if we are heading in the right direction wind-wise, we can reach top speed of 201. So, let's find out if we can achieve that on the Autobahn today. Let's go. I'm also going to do a few 0 to 100 runs because as I said it should do 8.7 but it's really really difficult because GPS speed this thing uh, hits the rev limiter in second at 99 kph. Can you believe that? So you have to change to third to get to 100 kpa so that's a bit of a shame because otherwise it would be quite quick i'm not going to call it fast i'm going to call it quick now you also get these renault sport seats and they are quite supportive it's really nice and snug to sit here uh very different from a normal renault twingo you do still feel the twingo dna because 
you sit a bit too high up. You, the steering wheel is in the wrong position. It's not adjustable. It is adjustable and it's way better like this. Oh my God, I was driving like that the whole time. Why? This is way better because I couldn't heel and toe because my knee was hitting the steering wheel. But hey, you learn as you go, right? That's life. Okay, I'm going to record the Speedo because it's right there. Very Renault-y. Going to record the draggy GPS. And I'm going to start it up. And for that, you need the key. Very, very old school. Oh, I love these old school cars. Just no turbo, no supercharging. Just engine capacity. Now what's also old school is this sound. You do your arm like this. Isn't that an old school sound? <laughs> Love that. Okay. Maybe you're thinking, what is he on about? Well, let's just get going and forget about that. What's also really funny, you can turn off the ESP system in this car, but the guys at Renault Sport, well, a normal Twingo doesn't have an ESP button. So they found this place to put the key. Okay. So ESC is now off and I have been driving this car for, what is it, 10 minutes now. And the first thing I notice is that the gear shift is really nice, but it's a bit weak, which has always been a problem with these manual Renault sport cars. The Clio RS Mark III has that problem. All Megane RSs have that problem. Um, if you try to do a fast zero to 100, you feel that the shift from first to second is not really that nice. I'm going to show you what I mean and no, it's not because of my horrible driving. There we go, let's do a measurement. That. It won't do it from second to third, as you can see. That was 9.0, should do 8.7, so if you have the best run possible, I'm sure you can hit that 8.7. But I'm always getting that ah uh, from first to second, it's not nice. Okay, let's see if we can improve on that time, because I do want it to be a high 8. But it is really nice to rev up that NA engine. I mean, every rev that this engine gives you is just a little more power. And uh, compared to the Abarth 500, this is just drivetrain wise a lot more fun. Will I be able to hit 100 before the intersection? Let's find out. Oh man, I hate doing this. No. Okay. Let's just floor it. And have a lot of fun. It's a lot of noise. It does sound pretty damn good, I have to say. Now, this car is only a few grand. Second hand. This thing has done 135,000 kilometers and Nick, the owner, has been treating it very, very well. He has taken out the engine, replaced the clutch. I mean, it really, really does feel very, very nice. Um, the only thing I don't like are these tires because there are these Nankang budget tires on it and it just takes away the fun. I mean, this car is very capable suspension wise uh, and you just don't feel what's going on because of the cheap tires. I just have to say it, sorry guys. Just, I don't want to destroy your cars in a review, but I have to be 
very objective here. Okay. Oh, it, it really, really likes to rev this engine. It's a lot of fun. It doesn't have any torque, so you really have to work it to get that power out, which I really, really like. I can feel the back end moving here. There we go. It already sounds like we're going very, very fast, but I'm having trouble <laughs> keeping that Fiat Doblo behind me. I'm going to let it pass because yeah, that's a, that's a Doblo GTI, no doubt. Okay, maybe we can do a 100 to 200 run because we know it should have a top speed of 201. And that speedo is GPS by the way, I was surprised by that. But look, it, it's 57, 56, it's really, really accurate. that the gearbox is really not that nice but other than that it's really nice and really tight okay top gear let's go on the way here I was able to hit 199 and then it just ran out of speed <laughs> but maybe now uh, I'm going against the wind I can already feel it struggling at 189 so I wasn't kidding when I said that wind direction is a factor when you want to do a top speed run in this car to keep flooring it. Nah. I'm not going to improve on that 199 unfortunately. So I don't have a 100 to 200 time for you guys. <laughs> I think I think this is the first time I don't have a 100 to 200 run. But I mean that's not what this car is about. It's about nice, short B-roads, curvy B-roads, and not about the straights and the performance runs. I really, really like this car. I really do, but not too sure if I would have it over the Abarth, because the Abarth does feel a bit more special, I have to say. It's a bit too... Twingo in here. When you look at the upgrade over this, a Clio RS, maybe a 172, I think they're about as expensive, like a few grand. I think that's a big difference. The 172 is the better car. This, however, is more special. You don't see many of these. Yeah, I do like it. It's a nice introduction to performance cars. This would be an awesome car for someone who's looking for his or her first performance car. It's really fun. You just have to like ring out that engine. And I really, really like that. I mean, an NA car, naturally aspirated. It's always cool, right? Okay, thanks for watching. Hope to see you at the next one. Subscribe to our channel by clicking right here. Go check out that Abarth 500 review I made a few months ago by clicking right here. Or go check out the POV review playlist by clicking right there. Thanks, guys.